Okay, um, I'm going to do a thing today, tips for audio files. Some physical things that you can do and some just like ideas that are really worth knowing, you know. It will, it will make sense in a second. I'll just quickly tell you what I've got here just for fun. This is just for, because I thought I'd put something out. It's a Sansui 661 receiver, Celestian Ditton 11 speakers, nice silk dome tweeter. Uh, Bang & Olufsen S75 speakers. These are rated, I think, at 15 watts. They're really old, but the tweeter is lovely. If you're in a small room, tiny room, these are great. Anyway, I digress. Let's do these tips things. Okay, the first thing, possibly this is the most important thing, and it's the hardest thing, is be, you know, we, have to be aware as hi-fi people of what realm, what world we're in. And we're in a world of people trying to sell things, right? This is the damn truth. I mean, this is what actually most vintage people, they already know this, right? That's why they're buying vintage stuff, because they've figured out, hey, this thing here that cost me 60 quid sounds as good if not better than this amp that is 700 quid. And that can definitely happen. You know, it might be the modern one might be lacking in more distortion, but it might be just dead. Just sound dead, you know? No fun. No one's going to enjoy it. I, I really don't think so. So, point one making is, you've got to understand the world we're in. People are trying to sell shit, right? That's what they're up to. They're trying to sell things. If it's a magazine, if it's a publication, they have advertisers. These advertisers pay money to be, that you can't spend money on an advert and they completely say, oh, these speakers are just no, no good at all. It's not going to happen like that. You know, that's how this world works, you know, if the whole world, I guess. We've got to understand the world we're in. And obviously, what we're trying to do is find our way through and decode information, you know, and find out the truth. So, I mean, certain things you can do, of course, which is, don't believe what you're reading, yeah? Uh, I'll talk about that a bit more in a sec. Don't believe what you're reading. If you can get demonstrations, if you can get to hear things, this is, you know, a ton better if you've got friends. Even go on forums, you know what I mean? And also, say, for instance, right, say you're reading a review for some small, you know, that kind of size, speaker you know there are tons of those you know that's really expensive say you know like a thousand pounds or you know more and they might say talk about the bass and they might say oh it's very articulate the timbre of the cello came through lovely what they won't tell you or they won't talk about is the fact that it's basically a, a small sound you're going to get a small sound, you'll get no impactful bass, you know, they're not going to say that. So you have to watch out for kind of what is not being mentioned. And if they talk about the detailed bass, or maybe, you know, you just got to try and be, watch out because they're going to leave things out. And it's kind of the leaving things out that might give you information, you know what I mean? Um, uh, you know, so they, you know, you know, and the other thing is, of course, what they'll do, which kind of really works well on the imagination, you know, with sound if they're reviewing an amp or speakers, they really like paint audio, audible pictures in your brain, you know, about how it all sounds, and you'll think, oh god, that, you know, that sounds really good. I want that, you know. But this is just done often with sort of poetic language and you know well so many often times you get to hear these things and it's just not happening right it's just you know the description does not match the reality you know and this happens a lot and uh, the whole of the hi-fi world you know since i've been sort of involved or you know i'm just a hobby person that buys stuff basically i've never worked in a shop i wish i had but I've had tons of stuff. I always, I just keep buying stuff. And I sell it after a while, but 
but all the time I've been involved in stereo, which is probably about, say, 45 years, there's always been this illusion of progress. Oh, it's just the new, it's improved, the Mark II, it's got better, now it's done this way, this, this. It. They're always maintaining an illusion of progress. The progress has been painfully slow. Right, it's been really slow. You know, vintage people know this, right? Vintage people know this. Uh, but the, the, you know, the, the progress is, is almost a joke, to be frank. I mean, I'd say there is progress, but whether it sounds more exciting and, and entertaining is, you know, they've uh, refined things to the levels, you know, if you're talking real high end here, I'm talking about. You know, completely eradicating distortion uh, in the high end, and you've got to say in the high end. I, I say there, you know, there is improvements, but in the sort of the lower end, you know, the world, the the mid fi or the or your budget or the ordinary hi fi world, I, you know, whatever progress has been made to me has been counteracted by a deadening of the sound, which is because they're using different components in microchips in amplifiers and stuff or they don't care about making good amplifiers all they care about is statistics and advertising this is another big point people learnt by the mid 70s didn't have to make things sound good you can advertise your way to success yeah you can just do it and it works and the magazines will say it and you'll sell it and so you can advertise your way to success. So they actually, it, it, it stopped becoming a priority to make things sound good. Generally speaking, generally speaking. Um, so that, that is tip number one. Be aware of the world you're in and the forces at work in it. And, you know, there'll be a lot of people talking incredibly poetically about things and you know they, a lot of them are paid journalists working for selling products do you know what i mean and i suppose they've got to do it but as you know the world of vintage is the world of probably the world where people have figured that one out but it's incredibly easy to get sucked in and, and read these things i mean i've definitely done it myself you know and um so anyway that is tip number one Okay, uh, tip number two, I'm going to talk about cables here. Uh, first thing I would say, you know, if you're a beginner or, you know, if you're having a huge experience in stereo, you know, the cables for me are for tweaking, yeah? They're not big game changers. It's not going to massively alter the sound, even if you bought the best cables in history, you know, you know God knows how much you can spend on cables. You know, for those of you that, that want to know, you know, the biggest thing that's going to change your sound is probably the speakers, yeah? Speakers sound very different. Then it's the amp, and then it's probably the source, you know, whatever your source is, turntables or digital, you know, and cables comes fourth, fifth to these kind of things, yeah? So, you know, don't be misled into thinking cables is a big game changer. It won't change the sound and it won't... Uh, the other thing that is interesting about cables is often when I change cables over, I think, oh, what's happened here? And really, it's like, it's almost like uh, someone's done a little sort of movement on a graphic equaliser. Suddenly, I'm getting a bit more bass and the mid-range is not so good and maybe the treble's right, whatever it is, yeah. But to me, what I think with cables is, it's like someone just altering the, the, the tonal, uh, you know, like, like a graphic equal. I just moved it about a bit, do you know what I mean? Uh, and the other thing is, when you change cables, you say you, say, you can change some cables and say, oh, I've got more bass here, right? That would definitely happen. And you might see immediate, you see, watch out for your immediate uh, appreciation of saying, because it, it's weird, it can be misleading. Yeah, because you if something sticks out as better, you kind of notice that bit. You know, if the bass is better, you go, oh, this bass is much better. 
And it's sort of, you know, maybe six months before you sort of realise or something that, oh God, the, the mid-range has got a bit duller, you know, and I don't like that. So what I would say is if you're going to mess around with cables, change the cables, but ha live with it for a, for a week or a few days and change them back, yeah, change them back. Because you might go, because it will take a while before the pluses and minuses of these things are aware. It's not such a sort of big uh, structural change like different speakers or different amp. Yeah? They, to me, they, they, most times they seem to just play with what is there. Um, so that's that other thing I would say. I mean, I don't know if everyone knows this, but better, the shorter the cables, are better. Yeah? The shorter the better. You just lose signal it seems. With longer cables you start losing, you know, just my new shy. But you know, why not? If you're gonna if we're picking and choosing, if you're gonna pick it, you know, do it right. So watch out, don't don't have you know don't have long cables for no reason. And also I have definitely experienced a thing where if I had a short cable because it was near my amp and then a long cable on the other one, that actually is audible, audible, that difference, a short cable and a long cable, you know what I mean? So in an ideal world and everyone's got different setups and you know, different requirements and maybe you know, you're not gonna care or be able to do anything about it, but if you could, equal length cables is, is good. That is the win, that's what you want, if you can sort that out. And the other thing I want just to quickly point out, you know, all plugs, you know, people have banana plugs, they call them banana plugs, you know, that slot into here and they screw their wires into that banana plug and the banana plug goes in. Well, if you want to make a very small but incrementally just all over better difference, don't have those banana plugs. Screw those wires on there and tighten that up as much as you dare. Yeah, you know, tighten it up pretty damn good. Don't have it loose. Tighten it up pretty damn good. And if you want to go absolutely mental, right? If you're an absolute, like, you know, I want 0.03% better everything, bypass these plugs completely. Get your speaker wire and solder it onto that uh, crossover board. You know, have the wire come out here, fill it so it's airtight. But in a way, the ultimate plug is no plug, you know, if you want to go that far. I've done that. I've done that with uh, turntable, particularly actually with uh, the turntable input, because the turntable was incredibly weak, you know, from your turntable. And I have wired that onto the circuit board. And actually, it was a long time ago, but I remember that being quite really surprisingly good. I remember, it was about 30 years ago that happened, but what point I'm making here, this is the point, plugs, the less plugs the better, and the shorter cables the better, and watch out for, is this really better, or am I just getting a little bit, so swap them back, swap them around, you know, and live with it for a few days, and do that a few times, and you'll, uh, you'll figure out which is best. And also, of course, only change one thing at a time. You know, that's the golden rule of science, isn't it? You know, if you change two things, you don't know which one has made the difference. Uh, so that's tip number two about cables. Okay, tip number three. Tip number three, you know, some people know all about this, you know, tweak things, yeah? I mean, tweaking is everything, yeah? I mean, I've been into people's hands. When I say tweak things, I think, I mean, move things, change things. I'll go into detail in a second. I've been into people's houses and they're going, oh, this stereo doesn't sound good. We move the speakers, we tighten this up, we change this, we put a stand, we, we change things around, and suddenly it's sounding nice, right? You could, this can happen. People can have great stereos and not be uh, utilizing it, not be allowing it to sound good. So I'm going to go through each thing one at a time. So speakers, you know, what can you do with speakers? Well, you know, whatever, how far apart, you know, simple things like this. 
Do you want, I mean, I wouldn't say you've got to have it this far apart. Well, your sitting position, your speaker position, you're a long way away, the shape of your room. Just experiment, just experiment, yeah? So, you know, if they're close, just move them apart. Things to know, uh, you know, put speakers in the corner. If you've got floor standing speakers, particularly like vintage ones where the cabinets are a little bit more reverberating, yeah? You put them in corners, the corner will shoot out where the bass will come out the back and you'll get, you basically get more bass. Stick them in the corners, you're gonna get more bass. So if you want more bass, that's the way to do it. If you want less bass, get them out of those corners, yeah? All sorts of other things you could do. How far apart, how close to the wall. I had these, uh, I was, had these uh, Spender S6A, yeah? And when I had them close to the wall, it really didn't sound that good. Or was it the other way around? No, hang on, hang on, sorry. Yes, yes, yes. Because they say it's actually fine to put them close to the wall. They have a rear firing port. You know, when I moved them in, it was miles different. I went from dislike to quite liking. You know what I mean? Big differences how close to the wall. Things like this are real big deals with speakers. Uh, other thing is, if you have speakers on a stand, yeah? So there's a stand. Now I've just put some little foam things. Almost always, if you're on a floor standing stand that's like, you know, 220 centimetres, 330 centimetres, something like that. This will almost always benefit from a tilt up at the front, yeah? If they're just totally rectangular speakers. Put something there so you just get a bit of lift. That bit of lift will spread the treble around the whole room better. It's almost a guaranteed win-win, yeah? Really, a little bit of angle on a floor stander is a real winner. Uh, you know, there's tons of things you could tweak, you could play around with stands and all these things make differences, you know. But, you know, there's tons of it. But tweak things that you can change, you have to think like, oh, if I've got too much bass, I'm going to fix that by locating these speakers differently. Just move things around, I guess, certainly with speakers go. Tweaking. Amplifiers. Okay. Not so much you can do, right? But don't, uh, you know, don't just like forget about it and, you know, take no notice. Uh, think, I mean, even a thing like this, if you're and got, you know, your CD or you're using an iPhone or whatever you're using, uh, change, try changing the input, yeah? If you, you might have a CD, if you haven't got CD, you should have tuna and you should have aux. Sometimes I go, well, let's not use this aux, let's go into tuna. And it's, there, can, there can be differences. And I don't know what that is, you know, uh, I don't know what's going on there, I mean, technically, but try it, yeah? Just try going in. I mean, obviously, a CD or an iPhone, like that, you mustn't go into phono, yeah? And phono cannot go into anything else, yeah? Can't put phono into CD or tuner. Phono is a super low signal, and the phono input gets, has a preamp that brings it up to the level of a CD. So don't mess around, can't swap phono and CD or tuner or aux. But, CD, tuna and aux is basically 98% of the time the same level of input, yeah? They're interchangeable, yeah? So just try that, you know, and maybe mess around with your tone controls. Look to see if your amp has a tone defeat switch, yeah? I mean, I literally, I am always playing things on zero. I'm not, I'm hardly ever using any bass lift or treble lift. So if you do tone defeat, that basically sets it at naught, yeah, at the center, yeah, no lift, no reduction. And it also, what tone defeat does is it bypasses these switches, yeah, because all switches degenerate sound, yeah. And I've got a tone defeat on a Sansui over there. I, I, I can perceive that difference in sound. It's just everything a teeny bit better when I'm bypassing the bass and treble controls, you know. So, you know, tweak your amp, tweak your amp. Make sure your plugs are in nice. You don't want loose plugs, you know. If your phono plugs are, are just really loose, I might actually, I actually bite them a little bit, just so I get a snug fit. Clean those uh, 
you know, clean the terminals with deoxit if you've got some of that, but don't have them all super loose, yeah? It's not good, it's not good. So tweak, you know, tweak your amp and as much as you, you know, it's a limited, more limited, but you, know, you can do some things there. Um, okay, um, turntables. There's a billion tweaks on turntables, yeah? I mean, turntables are the ultimate tweaking thing. It's really good, you know, I, I, that's why I, I, it's one of the fun things about turntables, you know, there's so much you can affect change-wise. Uh, but I, I won't do them all now because there's some sort of, a, you know, what can I say, some extreme things you can do. I might do a, do a program on that later. But firstly, you know, whatever the weight is for your arm, yeah, say it says 1.5, you might, and it, it will have a range of between 1.2 maybe and 1.8. Well, play around with that too, because this will make a big difference, or quite a big difference, yeah? So, just so as you know, the heavier the weight, don't go over the limits, yeah? But the heavier the weight, the more bass you're getting, the more weight is going down into that groove, yeah? And getting hold of the bass. And the lighter you go, the more treble you'll get and the less bass you'll get. And you, as you get lighter in weight, you, you'll start to kind of lose the definite accuracy of the sound stage too, you know. But what, what I'm saying is, you know, don't just go 1.5, that's it, forget about it. Go up to 1.7 and, you know, mess around with it. You can find it might suit your system you know you might have too much bass in your system and you want a little less bass that you know that's tweaking that's uh you know it's, that's what hi-fi is all about for me anyway you know okay tip number four uh this is about what you know what makes things sound good most times what makes things sound good is the combinations of that amp with that speaker maybe with that source material, but nine times out of 10, it's the combination of that one with that one, yeah? You know, this is why people can make, you know, terribly disappointing mistakes, particularly with really high end. If you bought the wrong amp and the wrong speakers, you know, you can, you can get stuff that really doesn't sound good, yeah? It's combinations, it's, um, so uh, I'll tell you another one, I listened once to a system that was like, I don't know, like 40, 50,000 pounds worth, or dollars or euros. Massively expensive, wasn't enjoyable, yeah, not kidding, wasn't enjoyable. I could have put a system in there that cost three grand of really great retro stuff, everyone would have had a big smile on their face, yeah, everyone would have been having a lovely time listening to music. The 50 grand, the speakers, okay, it was a long time ago, the speakers were like, uh, like they had aluminium cones. It had this really dry bass. I mean, the bass was there, but it kind of wasn't alive and it wasn't hitting you. It didn't feel fluid. It's just like 50 grand of worth of, of kits. Do you know what I mean? So anyway, the point is, it's combinations that make things sound. So you might have, say, if you have an amp with a ton of bass and you put it with some speakers with a ton of bass, you know, this is probably not going to work out. Yeah, this is probably not going to, I mean, it's actually very tricky. I can't really sort of utterly detail this for you, like this amp and that speaker, blah, blah, blah. But be aware, the combinations of things are what makes it work. Do you know what I mean? And uh, you could make the wrong combination and really have something that, that's gone way too far into, you might get land up getting, you know, spiky treble or too much treble or tons of bass or... So, oh, I can't really go into great detail there, but just be aware. Combinations are what make things sound good. Nine times out of ten, you know. There are, there's, you know, there's, there's, there may be some amps that just are great the whole time, but most times, combinations, okay. Okay, tip number five. Basically, watch out. Don't get drawn in, sucked in to what I call their 
metrics, yes? I'm talking about, you know, people, magazines, all sorts of people trying to sell things and la 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 la. They don't want to talk about the watts, the bit rates, the file sizes. I mean, those things have an effect and, you know, you don't want it to be bad, but it, you can become consumed with these simply, easily understood metrics of like, you know, watts. Oh, I have one 100 watts because I've only got 50 watts, so 100 watts is going to be better. I mean, if it's a different amp, it may well not be better. It may not even be better in any fashion, even if it's the same, like, company's amp and you monoblock 250s, you know, uh, so you get, uh, so instead of 100 split, you get 100 each channel. It might not even suit your speakers, yeah? It might choke your speakers with too much power. It might fill your room with too much bass. You know, uh, you know all this stuff, file sizes. What I'm saying is, don't get misled into that whole realm of a simple metric of improvement, because it won't improve the way you think it does. The way things will improve is getting it right and getting the right gear that sounds good together and just don't get misled into this whole simplistic uh, metric uh, let's i'll quickly just talk about watts you know because if you don't know you know 50 watts is not half of what you will perceive of 100 watts yeah so if you get a 50 watt amplifier and then you get a 100 watt amplifier you'll probably be surprised and disappointed at how little extra you're getting out of this 100 watt amp compared to a 50 watt amp. It's not double, it's not like the volume will, will you know, you'll bet, you know, it's just not incrementally, you know, doesn't go up on a graph in that simple way that 100 is twice 50. It's not at all like that. Uh, you know, uh, you know, there, there's, and also there's a thing about sensitivity in speakers, yeah? That some speakers don't need much power, yeah? Before they're going really loud. Other speakers need a lot of driving. So that might be where you, you need the watts. But, you know, so don't be misled that, you know, speakers have sensitivities. Uh, so the point here, just the point is, just don't get sucked in to this whole weird concept that, you know, the, these numbers will help things just get better and better. And I would say, truly, truly, what you want from your sound you want to enjoy it, yeah? You know, you want to be thinking about, is this exactly like this, could I do? If, you, if that's what's happening, then you haven't got a nice system. A nice system is the one where you completely relax and it's just lovely and you're just listening to music and it feels effortless and it's, you know, it's glorious. And to be honest, that's where you feel it. You feel it in your, be in your belly, yeah? It just feels good. And you don't analyse it with your brain, you know? So with all those statistics, you might, you're thinking about all these numbers and blah, blah, blah. If you've got a system and it makes you put a smile on your face and it feels good, you're enjoying it, you might want to just stop there because it may not get any better, you know? Because to me, if it puts a smile on your face, and you're feeling happy and you're really enjoying music, that's it, you know, that's it. If you're getting that, that's the holy grail, not another 50 watts or a better, huger file sizes, you know. Really, this is people trying to sell you things, mostly, you know. That's what that metric is, is about, you know. And then don't, so don't be misled, you know. Think about what you want, what sound you want, and just think, right, what, 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 what am I enjoying about this stereo, you know? And focus on that and making that better, not necessarily, you know, getting waylaid into statistics. Um, okay, that's it. I mean, there's a million tips I could talk about, and I might just do ones on turntables. I've done mental things with turntables. Uh, anyway, that's it. Okay, thanks. Bye for now.